Okay, so we're going to go over basic Sibano sentence structure, an active sentence, um, as opposed to a passive sentence, which are used a lot. So, the first thing we're going to go over is word order. The typical word order is verb, subject, object, like this. So, it is possible to form other word orders, such as su uh, subject, verb, object, but the the one that's usually used is a uh, verb subject object so now we're gonna go over case markers there's two major ones that you should know for a basic sentence and that is ang which is the subject and og which is the object case marker and um, I'm gonna put this sentence up right now so Nikita ang iring og pagkaon in this sentence Iring is the subject because it follows ang. And pagkaon is the object because it follows og. And nikita means saw. So this sentence would translate to the cat saw food. So remember, ang is the subject and og is the, su is the uh, object. And... Um, not actually let me go back to the first one not all sentences have to start with verbs they could also start with adjectives but I'll go over that in uh, in another video so I'll give you another sentence here with uh, more markers with an uh, object marker mukaon ko pakaon so mukaon is I'm going to eat ko is the subject and uh, notice that there's no ang there I'm gonna go over that in a bit there's no ang I'm gonna go over that in uh, the next point now, og is a subject, uh, the object marker, and pakaon is the object. So, mukaon ko og pakaon. This sentence typically translates into, I'm going to eat food. Um, now, there's one thing you could do here in this sentence. Since ko ends with an o, or vowel, just leave it at that, and og begins with a vowel, you can take the two vowels away, or you could take the vowel away from the og, and plop it right there at the end of ko to make one word kog mokaon kog pakaon and that sounds a lot smoother uh, you could do that as long as the end of the first word ends in a vowel and the beginning of og it will always start with a vowel so you're allowed to uh, contract them into each other so mokaon kog pakaon is the same thing as mokaon ko og pakaon so to uh, recap ang is subject Og is object. Now this next case we're going to go over are pronouns in sentences. Now pronouns don't need case markers because they usually they will change depending on the use of the sentence. So I'm going to put a list down right here right now and it's going to be a list of pronouns in their nominative case or subject form. And here's the first one. It's a ko, which is I. Ikau, which is you, xia, which is he, she, or it. There's no uh, gender specifications in Cebuano. Kita is we, and kami is also we. Now there's a difference between those two, which is uh, one is inclusive and one is exclusive, and I'll go over that uh, in depth in another video. Uh, so basically, kita is inclusive and kami is exclusive. Now, kamo is plural you you guys or y'all uh, sila is they now that's the subject form or nominative case the next case which is going to be the object case is uh, nako for I or me actually nako me ikao would become nimo shia would become nia kita would become nato Kami would become Nami, and Kamo would become Namo, and Sila would become Nila. So that's the object form of those. And when you put them in a sentence, you don't need to put the case markers that I talked about earlier for pronouns. So if you say, uh, let's go back to the other sentence, Nikita um, ang pakaon. If you say, I saw food, you could say, Nikita ako og pagkaon. Now, when pronouns are put in sentences, 
the subject pronouns at least, they take on a different form to make uh, speaking a little bit quicker. So I'll just go over them real quick. Ako has a shorter form, which is ko. And uh, ikao becomes ka. Xia stays xia. Kita becomes ta. Kami becomes me. Kamo becomes mo. And sila stays sila. So ako, ko. Ikao, ka. Xia, xia. Kita, ta. Kami, me. Kamo, mo. Sila, sila. So that's the nominative case. In the uh, accusative case or the object, the object, sorry, is uh, it stays the same. You can't shorten it. So only for the subject form or nominative case, which is they both mean the same thing. <clears throat> so uh, the sentence could be changed to Nikita ko ogpakaon. Now remember, in the uh, I said earlier that if you have a word that ends in a vowel and og og can uh, move up to the end of that word and become part of the word so you could say nikita kog bakaon i saw food and now my last point that i'm going to go over is uh for people because they have their own case marker if you use a person's name uh like for example ray or uh hannah you know jeremy you have a different case marker for people. So the subject case marker would be C, S I. And usually, if you say a person's name, like if somebody asks you, "Do you know Jeremy?" and in English you'd be like Jeremy, you would say C Jeremy instead of just saying Jeremy. Or also in sentences, like Jeremy went to the store. Ni ato si Jeremy sa sa tindahan. So C. That's the subject case marker for people's names. I don't know if I said that earlier, but people's names. Now the object case marker for people's names is ni, N-I. And you could use this when the uh, person's name is the object of the sentence. Like, um, do you know, do you know Sally? Kaila kani Sally? Kaila kani Sally? And, uh, that's the basic gist of basic Sabano sentence structure. If you have any questions or comments, just uh, post them below, or you could even post your own video response. And uh, I'm going to go in depth into more. I'm going to put more videos up that go more into depth about some of the things I spoke about earlier, like the uh, word order where it doesn't have to start with a verb, and also the uh, differences between kita and kami. All right, so thanks for watching.